All right, folks, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait. I'm sorry, guys. 10 minutes is long enough. If this thing is going to work right, it's going to work right. If it's not going to go to YouTube, it's going to be all right. They'll 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 live and, and they'll be all right. They'll catch it uh, some other time. All right, y'all. Thank you. Thank you for being on. Thank you guys for getting back on. Thank you guys for being patient with me as I jump back into uh, the broadcasting world. Listen, I have been a way. <laughs> I have been a way, a way, a way. Uh, and so uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So excited to see you. Hey, Anita. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you're on. Those y'all that are getting back on right, right now, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was trying to see what was going on with YouTube. I can't worry about YouTube right now. I hope that it's broadcasting. Uh, if it's not, um, it'll it'll be okay. Um, and uh, I'll make sure I find a way to uh, get it to those folks. Uh, but my peoples that are on right now, say hello again so I can see you guys and I can see that you're on with me. And uh, we're going to get into this tonight. Uh, I don't know what this is going to be like, honestly, to tell you the truth, meaning uh, I don't know what Holy Spirit has uh, in store for us tonight. I know that I have a little bit of a lesson I want to get through with y'all tonight or start at least the beginnings of. And I think, yes, we're back. We're back. We're back. Hola. Okay. Thank you guys for being on. So, um... Looks like I have some of my folks in, at least uh, knowing that, I, like, listen, HAPS is special, y'all. I literally tried to go in and delete the one before, and it was like, I don't know if you can delete that. Like, it's it's important. It's special. Don't delete it. Whatever. I don't know what the foolishness is, but um, y'all know sometimes the music gets on my nerves if it's too loud, but all right. So y'all are here with me, and I am so glad for those who are new uh, to the broadcast. Listen, I think it's been about two months, it feels like, but it's definitely been a month and something uh, because I, I dropped out before uh, time back in probably early March. I think it was March, uh, right before I left to do uh, a week-long six-day uh, revival in South Carolina. And so that is why I've been away from you, but um, I'm so glad to be back with you now. So those who are catching this online now, thank you for joining me. Those who might be on uh, YouTube, great. Uh, hopefully that's working. And if it's not, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, and for those who are on uh, Twitter, uh, I think that it's working on Twitter. And I could probably always go in into Twitter and make changes if I need to there. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for being on with me uh, tonight. We're going to get into this lesson uh, and go through a, a little bit of it. I'm going to talk about what we had last time and then take you through. But I'm so grateful to have you on and to be with me uh, tonight through this transition season. It is a beautiful time for us. We just came um, out of Resurrection Sunday this past weekend, and we are still in Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so uh, those two things are pretty much connected. And when you hear the Feast of Unleavened Bread, unleavened bread you're understanding that's during the passover season and so that is where we are right now and so this is a, a, a perfect opportunity and an appropriate moment to begin to understand uh what we have in relationship with christ jesus and from his sacrifice for us on our behalf what he's done for us um and i'm just excited to begin to share with you um in this lesson a little bit of luke 22 i'm gonna uh just kind of give you where we were last time at the end of luke 21 so we broke that into two separate chapters uh two separate lessons and so we're gonna get in a little bit of that tonight so you're gonna get some words tonight y'all uh come on celebrate celebrate you're gonna get some word tonight for sure no doubt about that we're gonna go through some of the word but i really want to speak to you um on another level of things that are not in my notes that i had not necessarily planned to talk about but i'm gonna allow holy spirit to lead in this lesson there's something i want to share with you i bless god for this opportunity to just to come before you i thank you for those who come on the line who join me uh you know quietly or who actually say something i appreciate you being on here uh to listen to uh the lessons and to hear the word and to digest it that it may bring strength to you that it may bring clarity to your life that it may bring understanding but more than anything that it may ground you and root you in the word giving you strength to go forward. That is what the word is supposed to do. It's supposed to ground you so that you cannot be easily shaken, so you cannot be knocked off your game every time something comes along. And so I thank God for you joining me in the word. Uh, but the word is alive. 
The word is alive. The word moves. The word is not something static. It is moving on the inside of you. It's moving in the lives of your family members. It is moving. That is even the same spoken word that's coming from your mouth. It is alive. And that is why we watch our words. And the Bible says that he watches over his word to perform it in the same way our word goes out. Listen, and angels are dispatched to accomplish that word. So watch over your words. Watch over the things that you say. And I'm speaking in the positive. The things that you're saying, watch God perform it. Watch God do things on your behalf. Watch him move on your uh, on that thing that you've spoken over, that you've spoken with faith, that agrees with his word, that aligns with light and life. Watch him perform it. Hey, daughters, good to see you on. Um, and so I, I want to just give you a little bit of that tonight before we get into this lesson. And yes, for those of you who are catching me and didn't get a chance to see me over this last month and a half, yes, I, I, I have been changed and transformed. And so there's just a natural flow now of things. And yes, I'm going to get to the word, I promise you, but there's a natural flow of things of what I want to share with you. A revelation that the Lord gave me this morning. I, I met with the apostolic council that I've been uh, a part of for a little while now. And uh, once we got off the line, uh, I had a dream. I had a, just a two hours <laughs> before I had to get up. And so I went back to sleep and uh, I had a dream. And the, in this dream, what I heard was this, that the highest law, the greatest law, the law that operates in the earth, the highest order, the law is spirit. The highest law that ap operates in the earth is spirit. So what does this mean for me and you? This means that either it could be a spirit of evil or it could be a spirit of light. And, and listen, they war against each other, but we know that, listen, darkness is overcome by light. It cannot hide. The light is greater. And so we know that light is always going to be greater. And so when we think about spiritual warfare, we don't have to have the mindset that's thinking these things are warring as if they're equal. They're competing on equal levels. They're not. The spirit of God has supremacy in everything. The spirit of light and life the spirit is higher than anything. That is the greatest law that operates in this earth. And where does that spirit reside? It resides in these earthen vessels. That spirit causes us to step into a divinity that is housed within our humanity. So we start to understand, hey, faith, that the highest order, the highest law that exists in the earth is spirit. It's spirit. Your spirit moves faster than your flesh. Let's just think of it. Your, your spirit, right? Your spirit ca catches something, grasps it, even before your body knows what to do, knows how to respond to it. Your spirit sits high above your flesh. Light. So I want you to understand that. So as we talk about this lesson tonight, as we talk a little bit about this uh, first Passover, uh, where the disciples are all together with Jesus. This is the real first time that they're coming together, or at least that we see them coming together for this moment. It will be the last Passover he spends with them as well. He wants to dispense some wisdom. He wants to dispense some lessons for them. And so he begins to do so. So Father, we bless you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you that our spirit is alive and awakened to you, that we're ready to hear what you have for us, God, that we seek you first and foremost, God, that you would speak to us, God, that you would reveal Reveal the hidden mysteries of your word, God, that you would unlock the things that need to be unlocked, God, and you would shut and close those things that need to be closed, God. We give you access to us. We give you free reign over our hearts, over our minds, over our life, God, that we would see clearly what it is you're trying to show us in this hour and season. Father, we thank you that you quicken us, God. Lord, that you, that you translate us, God, the way that you did Jesus, God, that Adam was a living being, but Lord, we want to be those quickening spirits. We want to be life-giving, God. 
We thank you, God, that we not only want to be great for ourselves and our families, God, but we want to be great for the world. We want to be that good fruit, God, that's consumed by the world, God, that they come to know you in a greater way. Lord, we thank you for ordering our footsteps. We thank you for this lesson tonight, God, as we begin to step into this thing again, into your word. God, go with us. Walk alongside us. Lead us perfectly as only you can, Jehovah Ra. You are the good shepherd. And we thank you and we trust you. We honor you with all that is in us. We thank you for what is to come. We thank you for what has been. God, we thank you even for the journey, the struggles. God, we thank you for your making us in your image, that you are performing your good works on the inside of us. You're stretching us beyond our capacity and beyond what we can see. God, You, when we say, no, I don't know that I can, you said, oh, yes, you can. And then some, God, we thank you. Thank you for making us and molding us in your image, perfecting those things in our lives that need to be perfected, realigning those things that need to be realigned. Lord, I bless you and I thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, y'all, let's get into this lesson tonight. Let's get into it. I'm trying to decide how much I should turn this down. It's either off or down. Can't decide. Okay. It does not want to go like lower than what I wanted to go. But all right, here we go. So last time we were in Luke 21. And last time we had this whole conversation. And then it spilled over from the week before where we were talking about the admonition to be aware. So the Lord is always telling us to be aware, to watch, to pray, to look, to see, to be careful, to take heed, to tareo some things, to guard some things, right? To look after, to carefully perform some things. He's giving us direct instructions, and but he's letting us know that in the midst of this, not a hair on our head is gonna be harmed, that these things are coming, but they're, they're not able to destroy us. And so he's giving us assurance in his word that all of these things are going to happen, but we're not going to lose anything. That through the death that we experience, we're going to get and gain authentic life. That all of the things that we are letting pass away, all the things that are falling from us are not things that we necessarily even need. But he's showing us that we're not wrestling and fighting to gain something. But what we're doing is maintaining what he's already won for us. He's done it all. When he said it is, it is finished, he said it is complete. All of the work had been done. We are now receiving that. And, I, and, and my favorite question is, but do you believe it? It's already been done. Listen, the, the greatest anointing on your life is, is available right now, but do you believe it? Yes, the greatest move of God through you is available right now in this second, but do you believe it? And so this is us apprehending these great promises of God for our life. And so we wrapped up uh, chapter 21 talking about uh, how the Son of Man uh, talks about a sign, what it will be like that many will be caught off guard. And he begins to explain what it's going to look like. And he's saying, be careful. And I love how he says, guard your heart, right? He said, these things will cause you to like, want to go to sleep, to feel heavy, to, to want to run off and get drunk or do all these other kinds of things because it's like, it's too much to handle but understanding that in the spirit realm, what you're going to see is light and life. You're going to see opportunity for the gospel to go forward. Instead of you seeing darkness, you're going to see opportunity to speak life to situations. Man, I find myself in tough situations. I find myself with my back against the wall. I find myself hedged in roundabout by things and situations. But what do I say? Oh my gosh, Lord, this is an opportunity for me to turn on my light. Yeah, this is, this is not that moment for me to just utterly fail but this is my opportunity to press forward into this thing that you've been showing me god yeah 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 for sure for sure for sure all right so here we go y'all the very end of this chapter we understood again be aware be careful we know that he's not going to take us out of the world hey joycelyn good to see you on my dear no matter how much we beg for him take us listen Oh, man, I'm reminded of <laughs> color purple, right? It's like, you know, trouble don't last always, but heaven's forever. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up a second. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up a second. Wait, 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 wait. So we just praying for heaven to come? We just praying to die? You mean we not gonna have no glory on this side? I don't know. I don't think that's what Jesus died for. I don't think Jesus died for us to experience hell here and just wait for heaven in heaven. He's like, oh, wait a minute. Cause why are we praying on earth as it is in heaven. Why would we even bother to pray that prayer if there was not an expectation? Uh, listen, not an enablement, not an opportunity, not an ability for us to bring heaven to earth now, y'all. Sis, listen, uh, this ain't in my notes, but why are we sitting around waiting for heaven to come? Why are we waiting for the earth to be consumed? Why are we waiting for the last days? Man, we, we sitting back doing nothing, just watching hell come through and we just watch him like well it, it's written well it was written and it was said so i guess it's going but wait a minute hold up a second do i not walk with my father in the coolness of the day do i not have relationship with him right now am i not a living epistle being written right now at this second are you trying to tell me that it's all said and done even though i'm here right now and he's granted me, all of you, dominion? Oh, hold up a second. So we trying to say that it just is? It's just all go, oh, we, we don't have no say in this? I'm trying to understand. If he said greater works shall you do, if he says I give you power, if he said all of this, then what, listen, so then should I be just simply accepting what I'm seeing? I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe, may, I don't know. Maybe y'all got a different understanding of this kind of authority. Maybe y'all got a different understanding about this kind of power. May, maybe you got a different understanding. But, 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 but what I read is like he said, you here to change the game. That's why I still got you breathing. Why do you think I still got you walking in the earth? If I have set you free and you are free indeed, that means I set you free to go and free somebody else. So, so it ain't written and done. It ain't final until you say so. Because I, I have declared forth, this is God speaking. I've declared, let there be light. I've declared forth. So are you agreeing with me? Or are you looking around saying dead, dead, death, darkness, dead, dead? Are you not in agreement with me? You're supposed to be declaring what I've already decreed. I'm sorry. Why am I getting into the prophetic? I need to step out of this. Maybe, maybe I need to step out of this. Maybe so. But I'm just saying what I'm saying. And so our mindset has been very, very narrow to what is written only. But baby, this is still being written. I'm just saying what I'm saying. It's still being written. It says that we shall not live by bread alone. Yes, I'm talking about bread tonight. I'm talking about communion of his body. I'm talking about communion with his blood. I I'm talking about the body. Listen, listen, but do we understand that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Listen, it didn't say that proceeded a long time ago that was written by Paul, that was, I'm just saying what I'm saying, y'all. It doesn't say that. It says that every word that proceeds out of his mouth, that's what I'm living by. Huh, listen, how many of y'all living off the word? How many of you living off the word right now? I'm living off the word. Listen, I'm living off of what he said to me last year. I'm living off of what he said five years ago. And I'm living off of the word. I'm living off of the word that he spoke, that he said it will be. He said it's going to transform. He said it's going to change for me. I'm living off of that word. I'm living off of that word. I'm living off of that word. I'm living off of that word and I'm watching him perform it. I'm watching it come to pass. So, so that means it's still written. It's being written. It is continuing to be written. I'm just saying what I'm saying. So when people say, well, ain't no point in that because it just is. Hold up a second. Do you know my God? See, 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 listen. I'm just foolish enough to believe like David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's trying to talk about my God? We about to take him out. I, I, I'm just, I'm just crazy enough to believe. Listen, 
that the miraculous can happen. I'm just crazy enough to believe that bound people can be set free. I, I'm just crazy enough to believe that the heartbroken can be mended. I, I'm just crazy enough to believe that those that are bound up in prison doors, and I'm not even talking about just a uh, physical prison, but in their own homes, in their own hearts, in their own minds, can be set free and brought back to life. I am just crazy enough to believe that. So he's not going to take us out of this world because we are necessary. Somebody say it. You're necessary. Come on, somebody say, I'm necessary. I'm necessary. Oh, yeah. He's not taking me out of the world. Listen, we got to stop going to the ivory tower. We got to stop just going to church. And that's the only experience we have with the spirit. I'm taking this where I'm going. And everywhere I go, I'm dispensing it. Tag you it. Tag you it. Tag, you're in. Everywhere I go, I'm dispensing what's on the inside. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be wrung out, y'all. I'm every drop that belongs to him. I'm trying to give it away. Come on. Come on, faith. So I'm saying that, man, when we get past this point, we'll stop being so bound by the building. Yes, go into the building, receive strength, connect. Come on, body, be fitly joined together. Receive what you need. Get instruction, get direction, be raised up, but then be sent out. The work is outside of these walls. The work is outside of these walls, man. I'm so tired of us prophesying to each other. I'm so tired of us showing demonstration to somebody that didn't seen and heard prophecy every week. What about that person who ain't never heard from God? Didn't even know that God had a voice. Didn't even know they could hear from God. But God is so concerned about them that he said, I got to stop by and say something to you. I need you to know that he cares about you. And let me tell you how, because this is what he says about you. And watch them marvel that God would take the time to speak to them. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, listen, it's time. I it's, it's just time out for playing church, y'all. It's time out for our, our patty caking in the building, y'all. That's real cute. I'm sorry. And I know it's easy for me to say because the Lord just has not had me do this establishment of a building. And even when he does, man, my spiritual dad and I, we always have these conversations. I said, dad, but listen, even when he has me do it, it ain't going to look like everybody else's. I already seen the model. I ain't going to tell you the name because he's already given it to me, but it ain't going to be that standing Sunday morning, Wednesday night or Tuesday night, or it ain't going to be that. It is going to be recreated for kingdom to come. That's what it's going to be. Because I, I can't do this. Man, I, listen, God is trying to raise up an army. I know I'm not in the notes. I told y'all this might be very different tonight. But I want to talk about real true communion. Real true communion. Listen, where we grow up, man. Where we grow up. Yes, we grow up and we say, you know what? I may still have some struggles, but man, listen, I, I, I'm reminded of Peter and John that stood by the gate called beautiful, such as I have. Uh, listen, I have been apprehended, like Paul said. I ain't got it all together. Ain't everything been worked out in my life. There's some things I still struggle with, but you know what? Such as I have. That's what I give to you. And listen, his power is greater than my weakness. His power is greater than what is missing. He makes up the difference. I'm just saying what I'm saying. He makes up the difference where I'm lacking. Oh, man, he, listen, he super exceeds my lack. He fills it in. He fills it up till there is nothing missing nothing lacking man if we would get that right we'd stop being so concerned about personality we'd we'd stop being so concerned about what somebody did last week last month we listen we hold people bound to what happened yesterday what happened last year two years ago man that person then gone on with god and they're performing miracles and you want to piggy piggyback on some old news man i'm just saying what i'm saying 
stuff that happened last year. See, we don't know how to inspect fruit anymore. I may find I don't really care for you. Your personality, I don't know, your delivery, your style, but I'm looking at your fruit and I'm seeing your effectiveness. I can't say nothing. It may not be for me, but I know that it's effective and I'm watching that. So guess what? I pray God continue. God continue to pour. God fill them up. God send them what they need. God continue in the work that they're doing. I'm going to pray. I'm not going to frustrate the plans of God. I, that's not that's not my role. No, no. My role is to help and assist as I see God moving, I see God in that. I'm praying. Enable that person. Strengthen them. Build them up for the work that they're going to do. Ah, I'm not going to stand in the way. Man, I'm not going to sit in the seat of the scornful. Come on. I, I, I'm going to sit in the celebratory seats in the stands and I'm going to clap. Okay, this is not in my lesson. Let me try to transition, y'all. But I'm just saying what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me get in a little bit of this lesson. We're going to be reading Luke 22. Again, thank you for joining me. Thank you, folks. Thank you for, where's Charette? Sorry, I saw your name earlier. <laughs> and now that I've gotten back on, I'm like, where is Charette? I know she's on. All right. Anyway, Luke 22. We're going to read the voice translation tonight. Y'all, I'm going to take you just so you know. I'm going to take you all the way down through communion. Now, I had communion with some of my leaders last week, so I won't do that. Yay! she's there. I won't say your name out loud to everybody, but you know what I'm thinking in my head, Charette. Okay. But if you want to take communion, you can when I get to that point. But I'm going to take us all the way down to verse yeah, to verse 22. Well, 21, actually. I'm going to stop at 21 and we're going to do the rest of this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll go to 21, maybe 22 if I feel like it. But we're going to take it from verse 1 to that far, and then we're going to leave it alone till next week. Listen, I want to hold the story of Peter. I want to hold his story because I want to really break that down for understanding. The Lord is really taking me through that as a message for me and as a message, I believe, for you. And it's something I had to come to understand. Man, we can see ourselves in a certain way. And then when God really shows us ourselves, first he tries to tell us, listen, he tugs us. Yes, Luke 22, Jocelyn. He tries to tell, tell us personally, this is where you are. Man, I remember the day. And I, and I don't mind being transparent. Um, Y'all know that. I remember when he said, he showed me an image. And I was standing up like this. And he said, this is how the world sees you. This is how they see you. And I smiled. And then he showed me another image of me curled up in a fetal position in a corner. He said, but that's how I see you. And that's where you really are right now. And it was like, why are you in my business, Jesus? Why, 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 are, you, why are you in my business? <laughs> you know, can't we just look at that first picture and you make that so? And he's like, but don't you want to examine why I see you like this? And this is really where you are. No, I want to just fake it, right? I just want to fake it until I make it. And he's like, you can't do that any longer. No, if you are there, I need you to stay there until I process you out. So literally he was showing me that I was being buffeted by the enemy. He could see that that's what was happening. But everybody else saw me standing and glowing. And so, man, that sees it. So what am I saying in this? We find that Jesus is always able to see things. And God sees that he sees the end at the beginning. He knows every piece of your story. He knows all of these parts to get you to the finish line and what it is you need to do. He knew he knew the the person, the people, the things that would happen. Listen, the, the disappointments. He knew the recipe that would produce his identity on the inside of you. Listen, some of us need to be humbled and some of us need to experience loss and some of us need to experience some of these things so that we can carry the burden of the Lord and so that I can minister to someone else from that place. Because how can I minister to you 
in a place where I've never been. So some things he allows so that we can partner with his suffering that we might reign with him. There's purpose in your pain. There's purpose in that burial. All right, y'all. So let's jump right into this lesson. Okay, Luke 22, starting in verse one, and I'm gonna read from the voice translation. Here we go. It says, this daily pattern continued as they came closer to the holiday of unleavened bread, also known as Passover. But what are they talking about, right? So at the very end of our chapter, what we saw, let me open this back up. The very end of 21, what we saw was this whole conversation about watching, be on guard. He was giving them instruction. He was giving them direction. He was giving them parables. He was talking about the fig tree and all of these things. He was saying all of these lessons, heaven and earth will cease to exist before my words fail. Trust me is what he was saying all along this journey. He was giving them this direction and this understanding to be on guard, be aware, man. And we had the word guard and we had the word being weighed down and burdened, right? So remain sober, don't sleep in this time so that you'll prevail and overcome. So all of this was spoken before. And so it's saying this daily pattern continued. These conversations continued as they came closer. Why? Because Jesus knew his time was short. And I need many of you to understand, and I'm not saying to anyone, God is about to take your life anytime soon, but at any moment, your life can be required of you. Have you accomplished what he said? Have you done the thing that he's told you to do? Have you, I'm not even asking about your effectiveness, but have you begun the thing he told you to do? Have you started the thing that he said? Listen, many of you have started well, but you have a problem finishing, but I'm not talking about finishing yet. I'm talking about starting because many don't start at all. And then you look up and you're like 70 years old and say, I want to do something for Jesus. He's like, I've been talking to you since you was 30. Why are you waiting till now you're 70? I'm going to still use you, but I could have used you mightily darn 30 years ago. So I don't know who that's for. But anyway, here we go. Passover. Jesus is teaching the judgment to come and the destruction of the temple. He's given them instruction of what to look for, that these things will happen. Nation against nation, war against war. But he said that will not be the end. So many people are looking at Ukraine. They're looking at Russia. They're saying this is the end. He said these things will happen, but it's not the end. Pray for Ukraine. Pray that Russia, especially those, those soldiers who don't even want to do this, find a way out. I, I'm speaking, God, give them egress. Give them a way around. Give them a way through. Give them a way out of what they've been called to do because they don't want to do it. They know it's not right. And so we're praying that life prevails over Ukraine. We're speaking life hovering over Ukraine. We're speaking the, the ceasing of fire over Ukraine, that angels are sent and dispatched to find them safety. That's what we're praying. But he said these things are going to happen. They move towards the end time, right? But it's not the end. Verse 2. The chief priests and the scribes were trying to find a way to put Jesus to death since they were afraid of the people. Now, listen, we start from the perspective of, man, people want to destroy that which they don't understand. People want to destroy that which they don't understand. And I'm reminded, you know, I got to say it now, Anquinette, right? You know, I got to say it right now. And I should say Demetriana, too, um, because... This is a statement that the Lord gave me. We don't understand the difference between slaves and sons. Listen, people have been slaves for so long. They've been slaves. They've been slaves to their leaders, to their church, their men. They've been so bound in slavery, so condemned. Listen, to the point where you're even asking your leader, should you wear this color or that color? Should we take vacation now or later? Who is your governor? I'm so, oh, I'm sorry. I just felt it in my shondo. Who is your governor? I'm governed by Holy Spirit. I, I'm sorry. I'm governed by Holy Spirit. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask the spirit of God for instruction and direction and correction. And then I'm going to come to you and let you know what the spirit said. 
and hopefully we can reason together. But people have been slaves for so long and that they find themselves looking for other slave-like situations to go back into when they've been set free. So when you have been unbound from the situation, you left that ministry, that place, that church, that relationship, whatever it is, you start looking for the same thing. A lack of deliverance. So now I'm looking for the same thing because I'm familiar with it. Listen, when you've been a slave for so long, you don't know how to be a son. You don't know how to be in communion and relationship with the father. You don't know that you can dance before him as a child. You don't know that you can come boldly to the throne. You, you don't know that you have that kind of, listen, I got that kind of relationship with him. Listen, I can be funny and silly, but I can also crawl up into his lap. Listen, that, that is intimacy because that's my father. I'm not a slave, I'm a son. And why am I saying son for those of you who got some gender issues, right? Because we came from the man. And so when he sees us, he made man male and female he made man male and female hear me clearly he made man male and female so when i say son i'm found in him i'm just saying what i'm saying and the sons get the inheritance so i know how to come as a son listen so when you've been a slave for so long you reject sonship all of a sudden when i try to tell you we on par when i try to communicate with you on this level you don't know how to handle it because you want me to be an authority over you you want me to tell you what to do you, you you feel like it's too free for you i don't know how to handle this kind of freedom when the shackles gonna come back on when when you gonna put the chain back around my neck i i I feel too free but sonship is a relationship i can come to the father even when i make a mistake i don't have to run from him i don't have to cower i'm not a hireling i'm not doing this thing for money i'm in relationship with him i'm just saying what i'm saying but that's what happens that's that thing man and we miss it but he's trying to get us to see we are in relationship see so guess what happens when you are slave and you have a slave mentality, you want to destroy what looks like lawlessness to you, but it really is freedom. I'm just saying what I'm saying. So, so you like, they live too free over there. What does that mean? What does that, what does that mean? They too free over there. What is that? Because we rejoicing, because we laughing, because we smiling. I don't, I don't, somebody help me understand what I'm saying. Somebody help me understand. They look too free over there. Did you hear yourself when you said that? I'm just gonna whisper. Did you hear yourself when you said it looks too free over there? Oh, so we need a little more bondage and that is that gonna help you out? We need a little bit more rules and regulation. That gonna make you feel, I'm sorry. I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm sorry. And so what did they do? They tried to kill and destroy freedom. They see that people are being set free, mind, body, and soul. They are following this thing. They have life burgeoning on the inside of them. Listen, y'all, you don't understand something. I try to explain to somebody, I can never go back into the box. You can't put this jack back in the box. You can't, you can't. I cannot be contained now. There's a fire and a passion on the inside of me that just won't wait a minute. Now when I open my mouth, it just comes out, y'all. I can't, I can't help it. I can't hide it. Yes, they are. Faith, comfortable with the shackles. They would much rather be, man, listen, you give them a free room, they go back into the cage in the corner. Let me just lock the door up because I feel more safe in here. I'm just saying, man. And so this thing on the inside of me now is no longer, like it's no longer set by this. It's set by spirit, y'all. It's so free where I don't feel guilty if I did not pray for an hour today, but I've communed with him all day long. I've abided in him, man. I'm open to him when he speaks and when he says something, he said, don't do that, don't say that, <laughs> don't answer the phone, <laughs> right? I have a relationship with him, I'm free. So anyway, they wanna kill Jesus, verse two. They had not been able to do this because they were afraid of the people. 
Listen, so they are plotting and their plan ends up being, let's take him at night. Because if we take him in the daytime, people are going to see. So you plotting and scheming in the night. You're whispering things in people's ears behind closed doors. And listen, saying we're going to pray for sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so. But what I'm doing is I'm poisoning your ear about this person. So I'm saying, well, let me just tell you, this is what I heard about them, but we're going to pray for them. They're a really good person. Well, now I poisoned you to that person. That's not wisdom. That's not wisdom, but this is what's happening. So verse three, it says, at this point, Satan entered into one of the 12. We know Judas, right? Also known as Iscariot. And I'm just going to say it that way instead of giving you the pronunciation that's really the real one. We don't have time for that tonight. But anyway, Judas set up a private meeting with the chief priests and the captains of the temple police to discuss a plan for betraying Jesus and putting him in their hands. Let's stop there. Jesus, listen, Jesus is doing the work of the Lord, the work of God. He's doing the work of his father. He already declared, I don't do what I want to do. I didn't come here to say what I want to say. Y'all know in moments, me being in South Carolina, some interesting moments where my mouth wanted to say something. I'm telling you, but it was like, if I speak on my behalf, all that Christ could gain would be lost. How dare I speak in this moment? Even if my flesh is offended, let it be offended. Let my flesh be offended and let my spirit remain high so I can love you. And I, listen, I'm, what is my favorite phrase, y'all? Another one. I am not going to allow your bad behavior toward me to stop me from being good to you. I refuse to let how badly you treat me and talk about me stop me from being good to you because he's good and he's in me. So I'm going to be good to you. I just resigned. it. I'm just, I just, I'm just resigned that I'm going to be good to you. Though you're not good to me, you're not good for me. You don't have nothing good to say about me, but I'm not going to let any of that stop me from being anything but the spirit which is good to you. Good. I'm going to be good. So that means we got to get out of ourselves. But we find that Judas set up a private meeting with some hoodlums on the street, with some random folks down the, the corner, right? With, with some, right? No, he met with chief priests, y'all. Temple people. He met with the church, y'all. <laughs> Come on. What you do is in you. What I choose to do is on me. Woo. That's real. And Quinette, that's good. I got it. But still, I get it. Listen, he met with the church to get Jesus. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. God the Father, he's over the church. Wait a minute. He sent his son. Wait a minute. Hold up a second. You mean these people from the place that I came to save and help are plotting against me? Yes, very much so. So this is what's happening, y'all. Verse five, this was the, the just the kind of break they had been waiting for, right? They were waiting to get him. And so as soon as Judas came, they said, oh, we have a way in now. We've got a spy. We've got one willing to give him up to us. Yes. And they're looking for that. So everything was settled and Judas simply waited for the right moment when the crowds weren't around to betray Jesus into their custody. They came to the day of unleavened bread, a holy day when a special lamb called the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus chose Peter and John and gave them instructions. I'll get to the instructions in a second. But listen to this. This holy day, the Passover, the Passover meal, the Passover lamb, there is always a parallel in your life. I need you to understand, and I don't know who I'm talking to, probably talking to all of us, that you're going to see things happen in the natural, and God is trying to show you a spiritual reference for it. There's a counterpart to what's happening. Some things are happening naturally, but God, listen, and we understand natural, spiritual. Natural is first, y'all. Always. So this thing is happening in the natural. Come on, Stacy. But he's showing you, I'm showing you this thing, but it's a spiritual thing that's taking place. If I'm showing you that something's happening, even, man, I'm thinking, Stacy, I, I hate that you chimed in right at that moment because I immediately thought about like the situation. There's heart issues. This is happening in the natural, but there's a spiritual heart issue. 
I'm showing you this thing, you know, in a family member. I'm showing you this happening in the natural, but it's happening in the spiritual. So I'm giving you a parallel of understanding so you know how to pray. So we see Passover time, a lamb is being chosen, a lamb will be slaughtered, a lamb will be eaten, they'll be sacrificed. And this is the season that Jesus knows his time is surely to come. I promise you, I promise you, the enemy will never catch you unaware. Because God is going to give you a parallel. He's going to help you see that thing coming down the road so that when it does happen, you'll say, ah, yep, I saw it. I didn't pay attention to it, but I saw it. I saw it coming. And so we see they came to the day of unleavened bread, a holy day when a special lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus chose Peter and John and gave them instructions. So he said, go and make all the necessary preparations for the Passover meal so we can eat together. Ah, listen, he called on Peter and John. That's, see, this is why I'm going to hold Peter's story till next week, man. Listen, Peter was counted faithful. Peter was counted as one of the, the, the you know, one of the group that was with Jesus, right? Peter, James, and John. That's who it was. So James was the brother of John. John was the beloved. And Peter, he's in the inner circle. He's the one that should have known. Oh my, yes, Shayabasi. He's the one that should have known the most. He should have understood. He should have understood who Jesus was and how Jesus flowed. He, come on, he should have had these things down pat, but he's going to miss the mark. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Man, it, listen, the closer. They got to him. You would assume, this is our assumptions, that you would know him. You would know him. You would have all this stuff down pat. You would have transformed to look like him. But just because you're close or just because you've been there longer does not mean you have it. Man, because some things are caught. Some things are not taught. Some things are caught. We make it so difficult. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to journal. I'm trying to find out how you did it. I'm trying to see what you said and how you said it. And I'm not flowing by the spirit. Let that spirit rest on me and I can receive this thing, man. I can't, you can't teach this to me. I'm trying to tell y'all the stuff that I'm flowing in right now is not something I was taught. The spirit. I just said, I surrender. I don't know how to do this thing, but do it through me. Do it through me. Just do it through me. Just do it through me. I'll open my mouth, Lord. I I'll just open my mouth. You put the words in it. So go and make the arrangements. Peter and John, where do you want us to make preparations? He said, when you enter the city, you'll encounter a man carrying a jar of water. Follow wherever he goes, and when he enters the house, tell the homeowner. It didn't even say ask, y'all. This reminds me of the donkey. But he said, tell him that <laughs> the master has need of the donkey. Right? In this case, it says, tell the homeowner, the teacher has this question for you. Where is the guest room where I can share the Passover meal with my disciples? God always has him covered. I want to say something to you, beloved. God always has you covered. If you are on mission for him, meaning your mind and your heart is aligned with his purposes, man, he will always cover you. He will always show you where to go, what to do. I'm trying to tell you, y'all, it, it is so clear that we trip over it. It's so simple. It's so simple. Like the gospel is so simple that we stumble over it. And so literally... He says this, verse 12, he'll show you a spacious room with all the necessary furniture. That's where you should prepare our meal. They did as he said and found everything just as he said it would be, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the meal was prepared, he sat at the table, joined by his ambassadors, by his emissaries. Come on, by the commissioned ones. Listen, I want y'all to hear me when I say this is communion. This is the communion. What am I saying? Around this table, all of these disciples, but one would betray him. Do you think he didn't know? Do you think that he tried to say, well, Judas, you sit on the outside because you can't be at my table because I know what you're about to do. 
there's something about us understanding. I'm reminded of Apostle Alberto, oikos, what do I say? Y'all know, Anita, ohana, family. No one gets forgotten and no one's left behind. Even if you make a mistake, even if you miss it, and we know that Judas is about to make a grave error and he will weep to the point of committing suicide. But even in this moment, God did not destroy him, did not kick him out. And Jesus shares communion with him. How many times have you had a relationship with someone that you said, man, I just have a sense that this joker don't like me. There's something that's wrong in this relationship. But guess what? What's our adage? What are y'all going to agree with me on? I refuse to allow your bad behavior or feelings to stop me from being good to you. I'm going to be just like the father no matter what. And look at how the father is, man. The meal that Jesus and his disciples shared is still celebrated now. We know this, right? We surround it with all of these things, but this uh, original meal was very simple and it was in a time of great drama and tension right we know the disciples were wondering what was going to happen and what was going to you know what was going to go next and all the stuff that jesus had been telling them when is this going to take place he's given us all these instructions you could imagine as he got closer to jerusalem as he got closer to this time period to his appointed time and appointed season for his task to be completed come on man he's about to complete He's about to, man, he's about to cross the finish line. He's about, man, he's about to finish his good work. He, he, and you can imagine he got closer. He's like, I got to get this to him. I got to get him to understand. I, man, and we're going to get to this part, man. I think it's in John where he says, I want to tell you more, but you can't hold it all. I, I, I want to tell you more. I got so much more to tell you, but you can't handle it now. Oh, that's good to me. But anyway, we'll get to that in John. I'm excited about getting to John. Jesus even spoke of his own suffering at this table. This table wasn't just a table where we sit there and we weep as we think about, you know, the blood and we think about the body and all of this. Literally, he's sitting at the table saying, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die. One of you are going to betray me. But not only one will betray me, several of you will turn your back on me and act as if you never knew me. And they're like, what? This is impossible. We all sit around the table. We, we with you. We with you, right? Yet through it all, Jesus remained focused on the central theme of his life and mission, the coming of the kingdom of God. He needed to tell them the kingdom is here. The kingdom is coming. Jesus said in verse 15, it has been my deep desire to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. Know this, I will not eat another Passover meal until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Y'all listen, don't, listen, y'all gotta get excited with me on this. I'm gonna take another 10 minutes and I'm gonna be out of here, I promise. Listen, he says, I will not eat another Passover meal until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Another translation puts it this way. He said, I've wanted so much to eat this with you, for I tell you, I will never eat it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God, till it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Man, this is good to me. He said, until it finds its fulfillment in God's kingdom. What does that mean, y'all? It means until it becomes a part of you. What is the kingdom of God? Where do you find it? It is within you. And I'm not going to eat it again until you come to know it. Until the kingdom bursts forth out of you. Until the body is fitly joined together. Till you understand what communion means in the body. Till y'all are fitly joined. I am not going to eat it again. But guess when I will? When you come to know that I am in you and you are in me. Come on, Jonathan. Tell you abide. And when you abide in me, you will produce much fruit. And in that fruit, it's going to be wine and I shall drink it on the on the inside of you. I'm not going to drink it again until I partake of it on the inside of you. Let the kingdom be formed. Ah, the scripture that says, till Christ be formed in you, till it be formed until the kingdom bursts forth out of you. 
Ooh, that's good to me, man. He is telling them because that is the fulfillment of the kingdom that you come to know it, that you come to dispense it till you come to tell others the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is available for you. The kingdom of God has come to you today. Do you want to partake? Chibasa. Y'all, listen, I feel like I'm taking communion right now. I could just cry, but I'm trying to hold it. And then in that moment, man, he says, I'm going to take this bread and I give thanks. I thank God. I thank God the Father. I thank him. I thank him. And I break this bread because I'm going to share it with you. I'm sharing me with you. I am giving you me, man. I feel like I'm speaking to my spiritual children. In the same way, I'm giving you me. And Christ is on the inside of me. Man, like, so he is saying here, I'm giving you this. This is my body given for you. Do this as remembrance of me. Do this to remember me. And I love the, ver the version that talks about as a vivid reminder. This is that reminder. Do this. Verse 20. And similarly, after the meal had been eaten, and they, they took the bread, then they ate the lamb and everything else and the bitter herbs and everything else that was at the table for Passover. And then he took the cup. The last verse I'll read now, verse 21. This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant made in my blood. What do we know about covenant? Covenant is a promise. Covenant is an agreement. It's a contract, man. And it is written in his blood, man. He said, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. This is a new covenant between God and his people. What the old covenant was, it pales in comparison to this new covenant. This new covenant is everything. You know how they say, man, it is everything. This new covenant is everything. Listen, when this covenant is, listen, when I die and my blood is shed, when I die, this covenant, man, is everything you need. You'll never need another one. You only need this one. There'll not be another covenant. There's no greater covenant than this one. In 21, but even now, he talks about the hand of his betrayers with him on, at the table. But I'm going to stop there. What I want us to understand is in that moment, and we see different versions of this in Matthew and in Mark, we see different versions in Corinthians when Paul is talking about it. He's not speaking of that day, but he is instituting communion among the Gentiles and the others that are there. It's awesome. But what we find is that at the same time, all of them are dipping into the wine with the bread. So is Judas. But never, 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 never does he stop Judas from experiencing his blood in his body. Do you all know Judas was set aside for this thing so that he could be crucified. So Jesus knew what had to be. And sometimes, man, that, that scripture that says, you must needs go through, you must needs go through Samaria. That's what Jesus must needs go through. There's some things you must needs go through. There's some things you must see. There's some things you must experience. There's some bitterness that must come to your life to bring you to this place that God has for you. Some things are necessary to produce who you're going to be, man. I look back over my life. There's some things I wish I didn't experience, y'all. There's some things, there's some pain I would have rather Turn the cup over, y'all. I would have much rather said, no, this ain't going to work for me. <laughs> right? We know we're going to get to a moment in the garden where Jesus is going to have that whole conversation. But I'm saying, you know, there's some things I would have rather bypassed. But would I be the woman I am today if I had not experienced with my heart? You know, and I know when these things happen, our heart can become very hard and it takes a concerted effort to keep a tender heart. And I've tried to do that. And in time, me coming back or me being curled up in a ball in a corner for a while, being buffeted by the enemy until I surrendered to the Lord and I died. 
I died and I stayed buried, y'all. I didn't, I didn't come out of that grave too quickly. But when I came out, oh, when I came out, when I came out, I'm just saying what I'm saying. I came out with some power. I came out with some authority over that thing, over that experience so that I could give that to someone else. But I'm raised out of the ashes now. And I can sing and I can dance. I can sing and I can dance now. And I can sing and rejoice like Psalm says over the broken bones. I can rejoice over the bones that were broken. I can rejoice now because I have an understanding of the necessity of that thing. And so I want to say that to you, y'all. The covenant that we have is greater than what came before. And even in this case of Judas, the Lord knew what was going to happen. But I want you all to hear this last thing that I'm going to say about Judas. Do you know that forgiveness would have been available for him? That's the part. So I'm not speaking just to you, but I want you to think about people in your life and friends. You know, maybe it's not a personal thing, but maybe in their own life, they hold themselves in unforgiveness for things that they have done. And they are in bondage in their heart and their mind about that thing. They can't get past it. But I want you to be like God and extend forgiveness so that they don't have to go in the grave with that thing, y'all. So much more I could say about that, but I'm saying I, I feel that, I feel that in my spirit, so many people are living dead, living dead. And because they know that people keep reminding them of their past, they're in agreement with that and they can't break free from it. Come on, faith. And so think about them. How can you extend forgiveness and say, forgive yourself? I'm telling you, I just, I'm telling you, this whole thing about Judas just today, do you know that forgiveness would have been available for him? If he had did that and said, oh my God, and went back to Jesus and said, I am so sorry, forgive me. Because in the same way that Jesus told the father, all of them around them that had, you know, scourged him and beat him and all that, he said, father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Do you think Judas really knew what he was doing? It had already started the cycle of what was necessary for our Savior to die for us. But I believe that he could have been forgiven. Man, pride will take you out. It will take you out. All right, y'all. That's all I have for tonight, man. Um, unusual, unusual night. Shibasa, come on. That's it, Anita. They won't be forgiven unless we forgive them. That is the scripture, man. Chi ah, come on. That's it. Wow, 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 y'all. I pray that y'all took some nuggets from this tonight. I pray that you took some nuggets tonight, that you are empowered by this word. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you, daughter. Bless you, Jocelyn, for being on and for sharing this time with us. I pray that this has done something on the inside of you, but I pray more than anything, it is something that now you'll be able to pass on to somebody else. Listen, what we share here is what we share here, but man, take it out somewhere. Take the, the demonstration of the word. Take the demonstration out somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to let it do good work on the inside of me, but then I'm going to demonstrate that thing on the inside of somebody else, y'all. I expect to see it. So many things to share with y'all. One quick thing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to pretty much wrap this up by sharing uh, a quick flyer with y'all. So what's coming up? What's coming up? What's coming up? Let me just give you the lowdown. We just had our third a community thought lab, man. Oh, man, it was so dope. It was death and resurrection. That was so powerful. Um, uh, your, your lovely sister in Christ and prophet in training. Uh, thank you, Faith. Charette came on the scene and uh, broke out of her shell. I'm so proud of her. 
And so more to come from her and the others in the community. And I shared about burial. So we had death and resurrection and the Lord began to like worry my heart. He's like, there's a space in between here that we're forgetting processing, which is burial. And so he gave me that uh, to really share with folks and to bring us to a, a greater understanding and not a greater understanding than the word, but a greater understanding of the process to get to that. And what Jesus had to go through himself, man, Jesus didn't just, <laughs> let's understand this y'all. Jesus didn't just uh, come on the scene uh, hang on the cross, and then five minutes later, get up and say, oh, thank God, right? He had to go through the burial process. He had to go through uh, that process to come to the next place. And so we must understand that it's the same way for us, man. It's the same way. So I'm going to share this flyer with you, which is really hard to see. But for those who are, who are connected with me or want to be connected with me, you can email me and I can give you more information. So we have a conference that's coming up in Colleen. Say Colleen, everybody. Somebody say Colleen. Colleen, Colleen. May the 6th. Friday, May the 6th, y'all. Friday, May the 6th. It's an all-day event on a Friday. I know Fridays are hard for a lot of people because people work. This was the day that was open in the venue that my spirit saw. I literally saw this venue and I said, it has to be. And they were booked on Saturday. I said, okay, God, you're going to do something different. Uh, the first part of this event is a community event. It is the community coming together in Colleen, talking. Bless you, daughter. Thank you, Anquinette. I see y'all saying, Colleen, thank you for rocking with me on this note. And so um, the Lord is going to have this community uh, round table with folks in Colleen, those people who belong to Colleen, being able to talk about the things that they want to see done in their community, their ex expectation of God coming to hover over life with them. There is an expectation that that will be the case. So I'm sharing this flyer with you people. So for those of y'all who can see this flyer, man, you might can even touch your screen. <laughs> no, you snap a picture or something. You you might be able to get it, but this will be shared out tomorrow evening. Not now, but tomorrow evening. But there is an event right called Jesus Moves Into the Neighborhood. Jesus Moves Into the Neighborhood. This is what's coming, people. I'm so excited. I got my favorite folks, Apostle Alberto and Apostle Prophet Copeland, who is going to join me. And Jocelyn, you may remember uh, the round table that we did the prophet's room that I was in with these two amazing men of God. And it was the most beautiful grace, grace, gracious and grace filled room that I'd ever been in with prophets. And I was new to prophecy and I felt like they had made a mistake. I was like, where's the baby prophet's room? Cause I'm in the wrong room <laughs> because I, y'all know, I used to always say I am not a prophet, but anyway, so uh, I stopped saying that now, now I just do what God does and what God tells me to do. So um, with these men, it was the most beautiful experience, and it was so loving and caring in that room that we ended up having more people wait for us for our room, just wait in line to come to our room. And I know God is going to do something, but these are my great friends in ministry, my great apostolic uh, uh, connections, and I'm super excited that we get to come together to do this. So I, I pray that many of you can make it to Colleen. If you cannot make it to Colleen, please be in prayer with me, though. Will you do that? Will you do that for me? Will you pray? So even if you cannot make it, please be in prayer with us that this is a movement, y'all. This is not a monument. This is not a conference. This is a movement. Jesus moves into the neighborhood, Colleen edition. And there will be other editions as God leads, but this is number two. And so I'm sharing this with y'all. Man, I'm super excited about this, y'all. There's a, there's a vibrancy in it. There's a vibration in the earth for this. And the expectation is that God is going to move. And listen, I'm not expecting thousands and millions. I know that it's going to happen. Let me tell you why. Because those who will come, there'll be a ripple effect. Their family will be transformed. Their community will be transformed. Their jobs will be transformed. We're expecting a move in the earth. And not because it's me, y'all. I don't have to even be known, but you'll know him in his resurrection life. That's what I want. And that's what I desire most. So more on this, you'll start seeing these flyers show up on Facebook with my sons and daughters uh, starting Wednesday night. And so we'll begin to share these things. If anyone shared it already, don't worry. It's okay, y'all. 
Um, but, but I'm starting to understand why I've been holding off. But we're going to be in good position very soon. God is lining some things up. Anyway, so y'all, that's coming. This is one shirt, but let me share with you the other shirt since I just happen to be sitting here. Boom. I love this shirt. So here's my new shirt, y'all. It's a reminder that God is a good neighbor. Jesus especially. He's good. You want Jesus in your neighborhood. And guess who Jesus in the neighborhood is? Because he's on the inside of me. So more to come, y'all. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I bless you. And Lord says the same. I will be back next Tuesday to do it all over again. I am back uh, on my assignment. The Lord gave me a good rest and a good break. It was those six days in South Carolina preaching six nights in a row like I had never done before, but there was great demonstration, prophetic word, hands laid, ministry. Um, and I, I love those people in South Carolina like, like they're my own family and can't wait to go back and see them again. More, more, more coming. And y'all, let me just say this to y'all. I want y'all to hear this. Oh, bless you. Yes, yes, yes. This is it. I have a box filled, filled with these. The next and regular. Yep, yep, yep. You can get them at the conference or reach out to me, Jocelyn, and I'll make sure you get one. So let me say this to y'all. Um, this is not happening for me because I'm any great person. I'm not diminishing myself. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is this. Why is God using me this way? Y'all already know. I know some of my sons and daughters on here would even say it because I make myself available. Because I set myself aside so that God can be big. Not because I'm any great person or I'm so educated or I'm so this, but because I make myself available, because I love God and I love his people. That's why. And so I'm so grateful that I get to do that and I get to love on y'all. So I love you. Thank you guys for sharing this time with me. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your patience. And, and like I said, next week, we'll be back to finish up this chapter, hear a little bit more about Peter and everything else that's going on in this chapter. All right, y'all. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you, Faith. Bless you, Jocelyn. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on, y'all. You guys have a great night. Take care.